BMW X5 here. People say horrible things about them. People say great things about them. Here's a real one that a guy bought used. Okay, the original MSRP was $78,000. He paid 28 grand with 40 something thousand miles on it. Now, this guy had worked on the assembly line at BMW, and now he does stuff like testing them out. He could take these things apart and put them back together again. That's one of the reasons he bought the car, and the other reason was he lives in South Carolina, where strangely enough, he found a British mechanic who works on these things who's honest. Now, this may be the only BMW mechanic in the world who's honest, as far as I'm concerned. Now, you can see why people buy them, because they're beautiful SUVs. They're luxurious inside. <laughs> we'll go on the other side while we're walking around. The leather interior's a match. It's got the dual sunroof, lots of room in the back. As a warning, if you don't know any BMW mechanics, and you buy one of these, you better have a big piggy bank for repairs. In the case of this one, he has had to replace the air conditioning compressor between 40 and 80,000 miles. It was $3,100. He had to replace the compressor, the condenser. The compressor just flat blew a hole in itself. Even at that price, if he'd taken it to the dealer, it would have been even more. <laughs> so, you realize they're not cheap to fix. But, as you can see, here's the injection system. It is solidly built, an inline six. He took the plastic crap engine cover off and threw it away, because he knows about machines, it doesn't serve any purpose. And truthfully, hey, he lives in South Carolina. You do not want heat to build up on your engine. You want it to dissipate. Now, if you live in Alaska, I can understand it. It's freezing cold, you want the heat to stay under there, but where it's hot, a beauty cover actually serves negative benefits. It's hurting the vehicle by holding the heat in. I mean, look, all this stuff's plastic. This little plastic line broke, and this little plastic hose here was 75 bucks. Let me tell you, <laughs> that's the tip of the iceberg on one of these. As you can see here, this is the charge hose, right? And this charge hose, he tried an aftermarket one, but it blew off. So he had to go back to OEM, and this hose was a $410 part. Like I say, tip of the iceberg on these things, the parts cost a small fortune. That's one of the reasons that he could get a $78,000 car for $20,000. I don't care what kind of nonsense they give you about, oh, high resale values. I remember way back decades ago, BMW touted that they had the highest resale value in the world. They claimed that their 528 version had the highest resale. They found some item that they barely sold many of and then the next year the prices went up so the resale value of the other ones they claim was high this is more reality bmw 70 something grand for a new one 40,000 goes for 20 something grand that is the reality of things because most people understand that BMW stands for bring my wallet when it comes time to maintain and fix the car. And check out the tires. He's got nice tires. You know why he's got nice tires? Because this baby come with those stupid run flat tires and he said it rode like crap. Why would I want a car like this that rides like crap? That's the big reason you really don't see too many cars anymore using run flat tires. Yeah, I mean, if you're worried that, you know, bad people are coming after you with guns. <laughs> You want to have bulletproof tires that run flat? Yeah, but if you want a nice car that rides nice, run flat tires stink. So, he went to normal good tires. You can see these aren't crazy low profile. They're normal tires, normal rims. They're not that crazy They're gonna go flat every time you hit a curb or hit a pothole and blow out. They're much better with these tires on them. Now, this car has about every option there is but he went with the base wheels. He didn't want to pop his tires on the potholes and deal with that crap, but everybody wants these big wheels with low profile because the way they look. This guy's smart. He got this for the way that it drives. The original idea of BMW was the ultimate driving machine. And way back in the 60s, hey, they were driving circles around American cars and they kept their driving up. It's just that they started going too much into stylistic crap that doesn't serve a purpose. But we'll take a look inside. Start her up. Whoa, look at that BMW, boy. That's a really cool little 
Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Now you can hear, this is one strong running engine. I'm gonna put my scan tool on it, but BMW and these six cylinder engines, they can run forever, smooth power delivery, nice smooth idle. A lot of companies have gone away from straight sixes, not BMW. These things are solid built. And this one has an excellent transmission. He says it shifts even better now than it did when he bought it years ago. They're solid built cars. It's the plastic and electronic stuff that'll drive you nuts. And as he just told me, you gotta maintain them. A lot of people don't maintain anything. Okay, let's say you're gonna buy a Toyota, right? Buy a Toyota, change the oil every five, 10,000 miles. That's about it. First 100,000 miles, 10 years, that's probably all you're gonna have to do. These you have to maintain. If you don't maintain your car, don't buy a BMW. So we turn the old scanner around. Diagnosis X5, US. Diagnosis and an auto scan. Here we go. So here we go. Now we always expect a few codes. We'll start out with the integrated chassis management. It has one fault. And the code is signal invalid from a transmitter. <laughs> from the electric power steering. As the owner just said, if you heard him, stupid German stuff. Yes, the Germans get carried away with just about everything. We really don't care about that. There's also an electronic power steering code. Let's look at that. I bet it's the same code too, watch. Electronic power steering torque sensor steering angle index faulty, intermittent. So we'll erase that too. The headlight high system is <laughs> two codes let's see what those codes are it's actually getting to be comical now okay intermittent connection headlight to cid no communication cid image data invalid or faulty <laughs> so we'll erase those two so according to this the adaptive headlights aren't adapting quite correctly but <laughs> he has no problem seeing when he's driving nobody's flashing their brights at him so we'll see what else is on the computer we have the integrated automatic heating and ac okay that's got a fault too let's see what that fault is all right people you're not gonna believe this but this one is stratification flap motor, front right, locking has been detected. You're gonna find this on any BMW as it ages. You're gonna get wacky codes up the wazoo because of all the technology. You wouldn't believe how many separate modules are on this thing. And all it takes is one little glitch. Realize all these computer modules work on five volt reference signals. Not much power, and usually the amperage that goes through them is milliamps, thousands of an amp. Hardly any little glitch, and it'll do squirrely stuff like this. So we'll go back, we'll erase that too. Now all the codes are gone, except for this first one, the integrated chassis management. It erases, but it immediately comes back on. It'll be the same code for sure. Signal EPS is invalid, the transmitter for the electronic power steering. So according to this, it's not getting the actual position of the power steering. There's something wrong either in the wiring or the sensor itself. But like I say, he hasn't had any problem driving it around. So let's look at live data. Two live data, battery voltage is fine. Remember, these are color coded. If anything's weird, it's gonna be color coded and be off. But look at all this stuff, ambient pressure, ambient temperature, throttle valve opening position, charging pressure. Oh, we're gonna the Germans a plus here. The data's here on this machine. Do I have to get a pressure gauge and hook it up? Fuel, maybe it'll leak, start a fire. Then you gotta buy new gaskets. This, at least you get a good machine like this, you can actually read it to see if it's working right or not. I'll give them an A plus for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and check this out. Variable camshaft timing exhaust position with engine running. It's running. It is 4.06 per 0.22. It moves around a little. Kerbal winkles means crank angle. The angle of the crank. Yes, they have to have everything in strange languages, even on the machines that we Americans use. So here we go with more the pressure. I mean, look at this. Running rough value. Pretty close to zero, I mean. Look, we're talking about you're off of 23 one hundredths of a percent, it's practically nothing. Of course, there's no misfires, they're all zero. But the Germans go further than misfires. They go to rough running values. Now that one was perfect for a second, it was point zero zero zero. Oh, now it's point zero four nine point zero six zero point zero zero again. That's the Germans for you. In their search for perfection, they find out well, we can get close, but we can't get the whole way. Yeah, but you can see, look at the amount of data. This thing has so many modules on it. 
it will make your head spin. Alternator temperature, alternator excitation current. You can really analyze these things if you want to go that far. It shows you the whole sensor, one accelerator pedal voltage, sensor two pedal voltage. They really make it so you can analyze the stuff. There's no arguing that. In ignition timing on a running engine, it's running. It is three degrees Kerbal Winkle, 3.75, 4.5. We'll rev it up, of course. It'll go up then because it's got advanced timing. Well, it's actually in excellent shape. Kerbal Winkles are not, so let's take it for a spin. And of course, it's got a killer stereo. We got all kinds of look wide angle, side angle, regular angle. Look, we can see That'll everything. Do. Look. Here we go, we're moving, you can see we're moving. I love these cameras. Now this baby even has night vision on the front. Let's hope it doesn't have an MG42 under the hood too. <laughs> and of course, as you can see here, it's got a nice heads up display. Shows you how fast you're going and the speed limit where you are, it's 25 miles an hour here. Comes in real handy. And this is broad daylight. We're looking at this thing driving into the sun. This really works well. And now you can really see why people buy these things because they're fun to drive. They're very smooth. It's kind of like riding on a magic carpet ride, but hey, they handle like a dream. It's just the repairs that are nightmares. <laughs> so here we go to our little drag strip. Nobody's coming, so well, somebody's coming there. You take these things out in the country, out in the highway, that's what they're made for. And here we come to our little drag strip. Now realize, this is just a six cylinder inline engine, but the Germans know how to make them. We'll check the shifting, we'll check the engine. Ready, set, go. Smooth power delivery. Those shifts, you can barely feel it shifting. That's how they sell them. You get in one of these and drive it, you're gonna think, oh man, I'm in love with the BMW. <laughs> but it may be one of those love affairs that doesn't last over time. And after you divorce your fifth wife, you might wonder, gee, maybe I should stay away from those things. Ram trucks are selling off a lot of them. Here's a 2019 a guy bought used. I'm gonna show you step by step what shape it's in and what you get for your money. We'll start with the exterior. Yeah, it's a beautiful looking truck. Black and chrome. The interior, the Longhorn. They're going for the Ford, you know? The Ford had their little country one too that they had with leather seats. Pretty much the same color, almost the same design, only it says Longhorn on it. We open the back, a lot of room. Hey, it's a luxurious truck, right? Since it's a double cab, it's got a shorter bed on it, and it's a four by four. Now this has a big Hemi in it, a 5.7 liter V8. It averages around 19 miles a gallon okay that's pretty good for a big heavy truck like this you got to face the facts big Hemi V8 seem to handle the active fuel management better and in the case of this one hey it doesn't burn any oil and as we can see got 88,159 miles on it so with that mileage has anything gone wrong with the guy well nitpicky stuff that came and went and he didn't fix it, for example. Out of the code for the stupid shutter in the front that opens and closes to get better gas mileage. It came and went. It had a code for the pressure sensor for the EVAP system, but that came and went. But the one big advantage of this truck is it lives, like me, in Tennessee. There is no emissions testing. So, if he lived in an area where the check engine light comes on, you gotta get the emission stuff fixed. You'd have to fix the EVAP system if the code came up. It's not on now, he says it comes and goes. You would have to fix that stuff, it could be a pain in the butt. In Tennessee, you do not care, as long as it runs okay. But if you live in a emissions area, you might think twice before buying one of these things. A lot of problems that can come up. You can spend a fortune on these stupid little anti-pollution things. It's just the way that it is. But in this case, he doesn't care. Interesting enough, he used to be a state trooper in New York. He fled New York State because he couldn't stand the taxes, moved to Tennessee, and he loves it. If he had this in New York State, he'd be spending a bunch of money fixing it so it would pass the stupid emissions test. Now we'll start it up, listen to it. <laughs> so it sounds like a strong engine. Although I can hear the alternator whining at some point in time, the alternator bearing will go out, you have to replace the alternator. That's typical on Dodges, but maybe that's why they put it here on the top. It's easy to get to. Let's get my big old scan tool. See how this thing's held up? Looking up the Maxxis Ultra. While it's hooking itself up, I really like the dash. I gotta say it's nice. Black, chrome, silver, tachometer, temperature gauge. 
easy to read fuel gauge and like i say he's getting 19 miles a gallon for a big old truck like this that's pretty good i mean four wheel drive's got everything you want it's got four wheel drive auto two wheel drive four wheel drive high four wheel drive low and neutral you shift it with a flick of the wrist i'm not a big fan of that but a lot of cars are like that just like they have electronic parking brakes which i don't like either there it is the electric parking brake a little bitty thing not a fan you can hear when i pull it on made a little noise then you push it off and now it's off got the vin number 2019 ram 1500 now it's communicating as i said these leather seats are comfy look at the back room nice armrest if you want if there's only two people you can have a bunch of stuff in the middle with an armrest cup holders you can pop it up throw another person back there if you're waiting for the dead i'll warn you something about rams this is a late model ram and the company is kind of a scumbaggy company you got to have special permission to access the data on these things i'm a professional mechanic i paid to be on these sites so they authenticate me and then i can access the data as a regular person you can't access the dead because they're scumbags they don't want you working on your own car so it's another reason maybe not buy a dodge you're gonna have to pay mechanics all the time to do serious work because you can't even access the data now to me that's disgusting but for chrysler that's business as usual ripping off their own customers stuff off we'll do a topology scan and here we go now it has no trouble codes so the trouble codes that he's getting for the evap and for the shutter grill they're not coming up now maybe some kind of minor electrical fault where it comes on goes off comes on goes off but like i say we don't give a crap it runs fine they don't do emissions testing but if unfortunately you were in an area where you had to get all that stuff fixed to get it passed so you can register the car each year you're screwed you got to fix it right now in the case of this as it stands this second this would pass that test because there are no codes so you would be able to get it inspected but how'd you like to be driving to the inspection station everything's fine and then right before you get there the check engine light comes on then you know it would fail the test so it is a rather major annoyance for those who live where cars have to be inspected for emissions every year in order to legally register and get license plates now truthfully this is a gigantic thing if i was the private individual i would not buy this vehicle just because it can't let you access the data on your own car unless you have a fancy tool you register with some of these online companies prove you're a mechanic absolutely ridiculous this just shows that chrysler is a scumbag company they don't care about their clientele all they want to do is rip you off now in the case of this truck dad is good fuel turns good all that stuff but i have to be a mechanic to access this data you can't the only thing it has a historical code for a small evap leak so we'll look at the gas cap so this is probably leaking but then again as i said the vehicle's registered in tennessee so we don't give a crap all right here we go as you can see it's a big smooth truck you know giant hemi engine it runs good but like i say if you can't even access the data who do these people think they are they just figure oh well that's for your security so someone doesn't mess up your vehicle yeah so they can rip you off and go to the dealer <laughs> it's ridiculous chrysler does this hardly any other car manufacturer did they were thinking about it but when they saw the bad feedback that people got about the chryslers you don't see toyota honda doing this you don't even see ford doing this they're not stupid they don't want to chase their clientele away a lot of guys want to work on their cars if they can't they're gonna say Ha, sell it to somebody else i'm buying one that i can at least access the information of what i'm driving we'll go faster so nobody gets right behind us is there somebody a little behind us now we get to our little drag strip on your mark get set go yes it goes even though it has traction control it did squeal a little bit but you can see hey it's got the sound nice pickup and you notice in the tiny drive i've already done the gas mileage went from 19 to 18 miles a gallon and i was just driving at a few hundred yards at high speeds let's do that again here we go and we're off nice pickup they are fun trucks to drive and now you can see it's dropping 17.9 <laughs> you're not going to get 19 the way i'm driving it sticks in my craw that you as a consumer can't even access the data nice truck runs good only problem was the evap leak probably that stupid capless system you'd have to buy the whole top parts expensive but he doesn't care we live in tennessee they don't do emissions testing would i buy this vehicle now as a mechanic of course i could because i paid for the license and i can access the data you as an individual cannot so if i were you i would not buy one of these things straight up 
you can't work on your own vehicle. They won't let you. That's just total crap. It just shows the greed of a company. And as you can see when you open the door, Fiat Chrysler US LLC. That's all I have to say. Greedy Italian company is now a greedy European Stellantis company. Stay away from these people. They're going to pull crap like that. Don't buy their products. And guess what? They'll go out of business in the United States. And maybe they can sell them to Europe to fools there that don't care. But here, we like working on our own vehicles. You don't give us the info. <laughs> All right, here we have a V10 Audi. Now, you always think these things are money pits. They can often be big money pits. For the original owner, it certainly was, because when it was brand new, this baby sold for $79,000. But he bought this beautiful looking car for $8,900. Now, that's one heck of a loss to take on a car. And it shows you the image they have. People always say to me, Scotty, those Audis look so good, and there's so many of them for cheap prices. Well, there's a reason for that, baby. A big reason. But this guy knows cars. He's owned this thing for four years, and he's only put $2,500 into it. So, he's smart. He knows a mechanic, knows what he's doing and isn't ripping them off. But the main reason people buy these cars is under the hood. A 5.2 liter V10. Smooth. Screaming motor. They have quality transmissions. These things are a dream to drive. And this baby's got 195,000 miles on it and still runs pretty good. Now, his friend though, she followed him with her Lexus because she said if the Audi broke down, they'd have a way back to New York. It's never actually stranded him. He said once he got a spike in a tire, but it made it back to the shop and he fixed it. For him, it's been a good car. Now you gotta consider, he paid like what? One twelfth of what it originally cost, so he doesn't have that much money to lose, even if it went on in flames. You know? Now he lives out in the country in New York, but this is all wheel drive. And he says he's never been stuck, and it's still got a key because it's an older one. Now this engine is still humming along. Come on, it's a V10. It's going to be smooth, right? Now, of course, it's the last of the dinosaurs this year. They say they're not going to be making any more V10 engines at Audi because, of course, they can't meet the European pollution requirements. And they say they're going to go to electric. Who knows what's going to happen with this? They're limited production cars anyway. People went for bigger engines for more power. Now, you can get the same amount of power on a four-cylinder engine if you really want to oof it up. But this thing still runs fine. For the money he put into it, he can't complain. Now, an average person who knows nothing about cars, doesn't have a friend who's a mechanic, you're just asking for trouble buying one of these things. But he isn't. He's having fun with it. In the winter, he never gets stuck with the all-wheel drive. But let's get my computer out and see what it says. Now we're inside. You can see he man was not lying. It's got 195,000 miles on it. Diagnostics here. We'll do auto in. And here we go. Topology, and we're going to scan it all. It's going to go through the whole car. And while it is, we'll check it out. I like it because it's still got a regular old gear shift on it. Not some just electronic. You got a real gear shift, which I like. Black and silver interior. Leather seats are still in excellent shape. Big old sunroof. 11 trouble code so far. Does have an electric parking brake. Pretty early car to have that, but it does. I don't like them, but got a nice amount of space in here. Now they saw there are 20 trouble codes. Intelligent diagnosis. There are all the codes. Steering angle sensor, voltage supply terminal 30. Right side marker lamp, open circuit. Tuner not enabled, activated. Power supply to terminal 30, voltage too low. Read DTC memory of ABS, implausible signal from anti lock braking. Driver's front airbag crash sensor is faulty. Front passenger airbag crash sensor faulty. Combination comfort data bus, no signal. Alarm horn, error in circuit for the alarm horn. Of course, here's the tip of the bucket here. There's more function limitation due to insufficient voltage. Engine control module, those are more important codes anyway. Well, due to trouble codes. Live sporadic, the worst code you want. Knock sensor four, signal too low. Power supply, terminal 30, low. Read DTC memory of ABS, implausible signal. Now, this is a high-tech Audi. He's got no problem driving it around. It is so full of technology. You never want to fix all these things, but we'll see what happens after he road test because I'm going to erase everything now. I was able to erase everything except for this one code. So we'll look at the one code that's left. We know 
that is a hard code because it won't erase it. Central control module. So we'll go to the trouble code. Alarm horn, electrical error in the circuit. We really don't care about the alarm horn, so we're gonna ignore that, but we're gonna look at live data for the computer, which we wanna see what kind of shape it's in. So we'll go to the computer, engine control module. We'll go to live data, and there'll be tons of live data. Here we go, all kinds of engine data, airflow sensor, intake air temperature, even this altitude adaptation. Yeah, the vacuum pump's working. Fuel consumption, okay, on a trip here, he's getting 16 miles a gallon. It's a V10, it's a gas hog. He says if he drives slow on a highway, he might get in a low 20. Got no misfires, everything's zero. And look, it's pretty good. The lambda control, you want it to be one, and it's 0.99. Now it's perfect at one. The other one's 0.99. Sometimes it goes to one, which is perfect. Pretty good for a car. It's got 195,000 miles on it. Said the data is insane on one of these Audis. I mean, they just roll and roll. Even gets you the resistance stator of the heating and the oxygen sensor. I mean, these Germans, they've gone insane. Kind of throttle. All the data from that. Our converter, it's open now to show you when it locks up when you're driving. Since it's German, they even tell you the manufacturer and the test stand number when I tested it when I built it. There's more and more and more. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. It would drive anybody nuts trying to analyze all this stuff. Look at it. Finally, we got to the end. So here we go. Now, I do have to say, man, that backup camera's pretty dark. I got to zoom in. You can see. Look at my hand. It's super dark. My camera will equate to it, but the human eye doesn't. It looks really dark to me. And it does have a problem with the airbag. Never expect them to last this long anyway. I may be old, but on these horrible Rhode Island roads, hey, it's babies going over them really smooth. You can shift it manually if you want to. You can put it in manual mode. Truthfully, these are so well made, let me tell you. You don't really need to. Now we're in our usual corner here. Kind of hard to see. People are coming everywhere. Here we go. This is all wheel drive, so. Step on the gas. Boy, that's one smooth car, I'll tell you. But really, another reason they've gone away from the V10 engine is, in terms of actual horsepower, they aren't that insane. I've been in V8s that had more. I've even been in four-cylinder cars that had more acceleration. This is a luxury car. We could take it down the road here to the polo grounds and fit right in. But we're not. We're just going to drive around here. In the rain, it's not going to slide. This thing handles like a dream. Like I said, he lives in New York. And we're talking upstate New York, where it snows a lot. By Lake Ontario. Never got stuck in the snow. He said, this is great in the snow with the all-wheel drive system. And I mean, you step on the gas. It goes. <laughs> it gets up and goes. Really, when you think about it, the guy bought this car years ago for less than one twelfth of the original price. Driven it for years, and he only put 2500 bucks into it. But he does most of the work himself. Or he has a mechanic in New York like me, an honest guy, who does work that he can't do. Now, it does have the V10 engine, which is very strong. But considering what he paid for, 70 grand less than it was new. <laughs> and he's been driving it for four years for 2500 bucks. But it's not not for everyone, let me tell you, it is not for everyone. If you don't know anything about cars, don't buy an Audi. That's why you see so many Audis out there that are for sale and people say, oh, I saw these Audis and they're pretty low priced. They're low priced for a reason. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.